Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Suraka Toshiko, proud member of Goonswarm Federation and Karma Fleet. And as you can see, a super capital pilot. I already made a video about this very same topic, how to read safely in a carrier and or a super carrier. And I really didn't expect this video to get so many views, so thank you guys for that. And as there have been some minor changes and some minor flaws, I thought I'll just do a redo of said video and so here we go. As this is a redo, um, there's not too much new and this video again will break down into three parts. Part one will be before you start. So before you start reading, part two will be ready to start and part three will be in the anomaly. So. Um, yeah, you finally got your hands on your first carrier or you got into a super carrier for the first time or you just want to learn how to read safely. So this guide will not be about how you can squeeze out the last few isk out of your tick because if you lose your ship in the process, this will not serve you well. Let's just get right into it. So as it is often the case with Eve, you can do many, many things in advance to stay safe and to stay alive. So before you even start ratting, you may want to have a scout in the neighboring system. Don't have your scout five jumps up the pipe because if there's a wormhole opening up in between, you will not see that and be very surprised if an enemy fleet enters your system you have not been warned about. Your scout in the next system will give you 100% reliable intel and to be honest, if you're flying a capital ship, you should have a scout. There's no excuse for not having one, okay? Number two, use intel. So have your right intel channel for the region you're currently in open and also use it. Report neutrals yourself so everybody in the alliance and in corporation can benefit from your intel as well. And to even make things easier, you may want to use our great software TACO if you're in Goon Swarm. This will monitor Intel for you and warn you in advance. And no, this is not against the EULA, this is perfectly fine, so please, please use it. Number three, oh sorry, back to number two, and please be specific in the intel channel, okay? Not just go, oh, there's a guy in system. No, you want to state exactly the system that you're in, the sh name of the other guy, the ship type of the other guy, where he's going to, etc. as much as you know about him. If you don't know, well, nothing you can do about it. But if you know, be precise. Number three, have a fax machine. So. Okay, if you just got yourself into a carrier, you may not already have an alt ready for a fax machine, but if you have a super carrier, then you should have an alt character of yours ready to be in a fax machine and to jump in to help you save your super carrier. Also, this can be just the same a character that's scouting for you in the neighboring system and you can also use it to jump to other players help and be the hero of the day so having a fax machine is a good thing and sometimes even just having a fax machine on grid will already be enough to make enemies go away because they know they cannot break your reps and even if it's just to buy yourself another minute or maybe two or three that's worth your facts because in that time reinforcements can form and arrive so you may want to sacrifice a fax to keep your super alive number four be in fleet and not just any fleet but the right 
Reading fleet for your current location. So I once saw a guy back for reinforcements in JU standing, but he was 35 jumps away from Delft. So, oh, big surprise, nobody came for his help. So be in the right fleet and you should be good. Um, yeah, in Delft, as I said, this is JU standing and not just only be in fleet to be in fleet, but also be on comms and socialize a little bit. Talk to the other people, make friends, talk about this and that. Um, I've had many, many very interesting chats on Goonswarm Mumble. So that's a good thing. Also, you don't want to join comms once shit hits the fan because then you're busy. You already want to be on comms. Because just typing what's happening, uh, that's a big, big hassle for everybody involved. You, your fleet, etc. Don't do that. Be on comms and state there what's happening, what ship you're in, what you're tackled by, etc. So help can arrive in time. Number six, have a proper fitting on your ship. So what you really, really, really need to have is a sinusural field generator. Big surprise. And also have your liquid ozone with you to light the sinusural field generator. Don't laugh at me for mentioning this. I've seen all the mistakes there are. And so yes, please, before you undock, check if you have enough liquid ozone with you and if you have enough isotopes with you to use your jump drive should you need it. And with the correct fitting, I also mean you want to go for a PvP inspired fitting. Don't go for seven drone damage amplifiers in your low slots and don't laugh. I've seen this as well. So I would highly suggest you go for two or maybe three drone damage amplifiers, but two are normally enough. And if you go for more than three, you will sacrifice just way too much tank, thus shortening your time. Um, yeah, you can survive. So please don't do that. Number seven, have a mobile depot with you. So once you're in the site, you align out to a citadel immediately so you don't drop the mobile depot then but once the enemies appear on grid you can deploy your mobile depot and if it's just to buy yourself a few extra seconds so the enemy will start shooting at your mobile depot and not your super carrier and this will buy you some extra seconds for reinforcements to arrive that's the reason why you want to have a mobile depot with you should your enemies, however, not be shooting your mobile depot and it will really deploy and anchor, that's a good thing because then you can put some valuable stuff in there that will be safe from destruction should you really blow up. So either way, it's a good thing to have a mobile depot with you. Number eight, don't over bling or do over bling. And I say this very much depends on yeah, if you're flying a normal carrier or a super carrier. If you're flying a normal carrier, I will highly advise you not to go for dead space or even officer modules. Just stick with faction modules or even tech two. Tech two is fine most of the time and you will not lose as much as if your ship gets blown up. So to begin with, Tech 2 is just awesome. However, if you own a super carrier, don't be a poor, show what you got and buy those dead space modules. Maybe even officer, if you feel confident about yourself. Cool. Number nine, Amore. And yeah, I think at the current meta, Armor tanked capital ships are the most likely ones to survive in a PvP situation. Why? Because if you're shield tanked, you most most likely rely 
on active resistance modules or active repair modules and you can be muted out by just five or six stealth bombers with fo focused void bombs. So armor will help you much more. However, um, with an armor tank, you will be a little bit slower. You will be slower to align to uh, your citadel or to the next site. So keep that in mind. But generally speaking, armor tank will be the way to go if you want to survive for as long as possible. So I, again, this is just my opinion. So just ask 10 different people and you will get 10 different answers. But this is my opinion. I would advise you to go for the Nyx for a good compromise between uh, ratting capabilities and PvP capabilities. Because you will have the fighter damage bonus, that's very good for PvE. And you will have the fighter hit points bonus, that's good for PvE and PvP as well. And you can tank the Nyx shield, you can tank the Nyx armor. It's just very, very versatile. And it is much harder to defang than the Aeon. Because the Nyx has a much bigger fighter bay. So this or these are my reasons why I would um, suggest to take the Nyx for this. So we did all of the nine points above. So we think we are ready to start, but are we? No, we are not, because before we really, really start, we want to check our system for wormholes. So we undock. And we mark our anomaly scanner and we see, okay, there are no, no wormholes, there are no unknown signatures in space. That's a good thing. So we mark all the signatures we will not be doing and just keep the signatures we may be doing unmarked and ignore the rest. So this gives us a very tidy list of signatures we can be doing. And you see the screen here is a little bit yeah, full of sparkles and shiny stuff, etc. So what I do when I read is I optimize my graphics settings. Hang on. Optimize my graphics settings for performance, the so-called potato mode, because then everything... I think it, it just looks a little bit... Um, yeah, less distractive, I would say, okay? Well, ready to start, here we go. Okay, then one little hint, mark local. So just click into local chat and then hit control and A. And I know the area around here is pixelated, but uh, you will get the idea. So hit control A and the whole local chat will be highlighted. Every time a new guy enters system, he will appear as not highlighted and thus it will be much easier for you to spot once a new guy entered system, especially when this is a neutral guy. So make a habit out of this and you will be able to spot enemies much quicker. Number 12, have a bookmark on your citadel. So as you see, I'm sitting here at a keep star and I would not make my bookmark just right here in the middle between those two towers because if your enemies are very well organized and they plan ahead, they will make a bubble to catch you. So maybe you want to have your bookmark uh, to the left side or here to the right side. Oop. Somewhere where it's not just the, the go-to option, okay? Just a little bit off. Good. Then we have number 13, D-Scan. 
What do I mean with that? I'm in a system full of friendly people. Why would I want to descan? Simple, because you don't want to warp into a site that is already taken. So what do I do? I activate my tactical overlay and I align to the site I want to be doing. This will make this thin blue line appear, indicating the direction in which the anomaly is. So here it is. And once I found it, I hit C, hold down C and click it. So the camera will center on this anomaly and switching to D-scan, highest range, five degrees angle, I can scan it and see, oh, there already is someone in that location. So what do I do? Yes, I ignore it. Align to the next side. Rinse and repeat. Follow the thin blue line towards the next anomaly. Descan it again. Nothing on descan. So we're good to go. And as you can see, warp in at a distance number 14 so you want to be warping in a site um, within at least 50 kilometers why because if you warp in at 0 to 30 kilometers chances are you will get stuck on the structure that is within the site so warp in at least within 50 kilometers and also vary a little bit sometimes warp in at 70 to 100 why? Because if your enemies warp into the site, they descanned you in and they land at zero and you warped in at 100, this will give you just the extra few seconds you need to escape or scoop in your fighters. So it's always a good thing to warp in at a distance. Now, in the anomaly, as you see, what I will be doing, the first thing is... I will align out immediately. That's the first thing I do. Also, I will be activating my micro warp drive here, which is a 500 mn micro warp drive. This is a battleship sized micro warp drive. Why? Because it only has a cycle time of 10 seconds rather than the 10, uh, 20 seconds of a capital sized micro warp drive. So you're not yeah, you don't need to wait as long. Okay, so once here this sign doesn't say warping anymore, you double click, activate your micro warp drive for just one cycle and align out. Then what I do, I activate my tracking links and my network sensor array and immediately deactivate it again. Why? Because I let my network sensor array cycle number 17. But let's come to number 16. Let your fighters orbit. How do I do this and why do I do this? First, why I'm doing this is very simple. I don't want my fighters to be just floating in space and be shot by the rats. So have them orbit at all times because once they killed a target their velocity will immediately drop down to zero thus making them a sitting duck and very easy to kill for the NPCs. So how do I do it? I made um, hotkeys for myself. Oops. So if I'm Pressing my hotkey, I will either select my own ship, which will be indicated by this blue circle around my capacitor, or if I deselect it, I will have just the blue circles around my fighters, meaning I'm giving commands to my fighters. So if I select my orbit hotkey, which is W, and I click on one of the NPCs, my fighters will orbit around that NPC. If I have my ship selected here with this blue circle around my ship and I hit orbit, my own ship will start orbiting. So I don't want to be doing that. 
just showed you what I meant. Okay, so you have your fighters orbit uh, the NPCs as much as you can to keep them from getting killed. Number 17, cycle your networked sensor array. As I mentioned in the beginning, I just pulse it. So I just activate it when I really, really need it. Why do I do this? Simple reason to preserve capacitor. This may sound a little bit Scrooge-ish. Because what about the capacitor? You can just fly to your citadel and have your cap recharged, right? Well, yes and no. Because if you need to do an emergency jump, you want to have at least 75% cap left over to activate your jump drive. So you want to preserve cap as good as you can. That's why I pulse the network sensor array. So this is never a bad idea. Number 18, wait until the site is done. What do I mean with this? I wait until the site is done before I align to another site. This will make the time span as small or let me put this differently. Um, now I'm aligning to the Citadel. And if I would start aligning now to another side, this would give the enemies much more time to catch me. Because if they now entered system, I would need to realign to the Citadel completely without need. Because why would I need to align to another side right now? So I personally would suggest you only align to a new side once your current site is completely done. And yes, I know you can also do it um, within the last wave of your current site, but for maximum safety, just wait until your site really is completely done. That's my tip for you. Number 19, refuel. And no, I don't mean your ship, or not only your ship, you also want to refuel for yourself. So you may be running for an hour or maybe two or three. Take some breaks in between. Just have a snack, get something to drink, watch a little bit of TV. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get burned out on ratting. You only can rat for so long before it gets really, really boring. And oh, look at that. Just got a 10 out of 10. That's beautiful. So, every now and then, walk back to the Citadel, have your shields recharged, your armor repaired, get a snack, have a break, and start reading again once you're refreshed. And now I, sh I will show you one more thing, because now that the site is finished, you see my fighters are at 100 kilometers away from me. So this fighter is 100 kilometers away, this fighter is 100 kilometers away from me, this fighter squadron is not, it's 50 kilometers away from me and those two are somewhere at 70. So what do I do? I recall them and for this fighter I select the micro jump drive to return to me and for this as well, for this that is at 50 kilometers I don't and for those two I just select the micro warp drive and they will just phew, speed to my ship and return to the hangar. So I don't need to wait for so long until they're back in my fighter bay because personally I like to have my fighters back in my fighter bay before I warp to the next side. But yes, you don't absolutely need to. You can just warp to the next side and once you left warp you can recall them to your new side and start fighting again. Having said this, let's come to point number 20, which is the last point, focus. So I haven't really lost fighters very often, but when I did, 
it is because I was watching some movie or uh, was on the phone with my girlfriend or whatever reason it is that made me distracted. Once you're not focused, you will start making mistakes and this will cost you fighters or even your ship if you're not paying attention. So pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to Intel, use Taco, have a look at local, have a look at your probe scanner if there is some new signature popping up. Um, those are many things to keep in mind. And if you do and stick with all those 20 points I just told you about, you have done much, much more than everybody else out there to stay alive and you are much less likely to be killed. And if you want to have a good time, just look at Z-Kill and look for some of the super kills in Delph. Chances are they will be not PvP related fitted and have been an easy target. So if you are not, that's already making a great great difference and if you're paying attention you maybe not even get tackled in the first place and avoid the battle. But if you need to fight you want to have the best chance chances for surviving this. So I hope I covered everything if I missed something again or if you have any annotations feel free to write me in the comments below and also give me a thumbs up and hit the abo button and, and, and like me and no don't do that I don't really care I just care that my fellow goons stay alive and don't provide our enemies with just ridiculously easy targets okay cool so thanks for watching and see you out in Delft bye bye Soraka Tushiko.